After spending over six figures with a demand gen campaigns alone since their launch, I can constantly say that I know a thing or two when it comes to running them the right way. And in this video, I want to share with you the do's and don'ts of demand gen campaigns so you don't end up wasting your budgets like I did running demand gen campaigns. But before we get into any of that, let's take a step back and actually even understand what a demand gen campaign is. What you want to understand is demand gen campaigns were basically introduced as an alternative to go after display traffic targeting things like youtube shorts targeting things like youtube videos in general discover placement gmail etc these are the main kinds of display placements which google ads is partners with and can show the ads across because that's a great way for google ads itself to expand the amount of traffic that it gets you personally your brand and also for google to make more money but basically to kind of simplify this you can think of a demand gen campaign as a performance max campaign with asset groups broken up into its own separate campaign that's essentially what a demand gen campaign is a performance max campaign can do the same exact thing but if you don't want to overlap you know if you don't want to make the performance max campaign do too many things at once a demand gen campaign is perfect for that first of all demand gen campaign is not for every brand it depends where your brand is right now in its journey if for example your brand is already very profitable with google ads or just in general you are fine spending a little bit of extra budget getting that extra brand awareness really branding and just kind of getting profit through the door even if it means they're not going to convert a demand gen campaign is right for your brand but on the other end if you're struggling with google ads if your brand is not as profitable as you would like or you're on the verge of breaking even then demand gen campaign should be something you think 10 steps down the line because realistically you would just end up wasting a lot of money on demand gen and brand awareness when you could be spending that on conversion based campaigns like a performance max or a search campaign etc so this is something we do for a lot of the brands we handle as well under our agency really choosing specifically if the brand that we work with even needs a demand gen campaign or not because even if you might be at 500,000 a month a million dollars a month in revenue sometimes you might just not need a demand gen campaign because it doesn't fit with where you want the brand to go if you don't care about brand awareness there's no need for a demand gen campaign if you run a brand by the way is doing a million dollars a year you need extra help scaling to the next level with google go on to my website at yourworkin.com and schedule a free call with me and let's see if we can potentially work together and make that happen but with that let's now go over the first the don'ts of a demand gen campaign what you should not be doing with a demand gen first and foremost never use a demand gen campaign with the sales aspect in mind because i'll be honest with you it's gonna be very difficult for you to get profitable sales or even sales in general from a demand gen most likely than not it's gonna be losing you money and i speak from experience because i've spent so much money on demand gen at this point now if this turns out to be completely different for you feel free to get in contact with me i would love to know what strategy you did for your demand gen but more likely than not it's probably not gonna get you too many sales even if it does probably won't be profitable second never run a demand gen campaign without restriction this is a big don't because the moments you you don't set any restrictions with the demand gen the moment you just let it run free and wild with very basically no bidding strategy or no target row as your target cp is set what will happen is the demand gen campaign will start to go crazy across youtube across gmail and all these different placements which are designed for brand awareness for getting tons of traffic quickly so you will end up spending a lot of money quickly as well as a result so to avoid that basically never run a demand gen campaign without any types of restrictions you want to have something incorporated there third never use optimized targeting with demand gen so if you go inside a demand gen campaign let's say we're trying to create a brand new demand gen campaign right here we go on over to sales as the objective we scroll all the way down click continue we choose demand gen right here and then click continue you will see that it gives the option of actually optimizing for specific types of targeting if you scroll all the way to the ad group section and you will notice that it says that it wants you to do optimized targeting and this will already be chosen always be sure to check this box uncheck it i mean because if you would keep this checked what will happen is now google is going to determine its own audience it's going to try to go after a bunch of different people which may or may not purchase or may not even be good for your brand and this is going to get a lot of faulty data within your ad account which is something you never that want to have but finally you don't want to ever run the same bidding strategy as you would with a performance max campaign or a standard shopping campaign on this demand gen campaign and the reason behind this is the standard shopping campaigns pmax campaigns are designed differently they operate differently and the same strategies don't work because the ultimate goal of these kinds of campaigns is much much different than the goal of a demand gen so you want to keep that in mind when go optimizing around a demand gen campaign now with that being said let's move on to the do's of a demand gen campaign what you should be doing first you want to use creatives within a demand gen campaign which have worked in the past or are the highest quality you don't want to be going into a demand gen campaign with just a bunch of random creatives that you never tested before 
you I recommend you test them first via Pmax before you run them in a demand gen campaign or just through Facebook ads, TikTok ads, etc. Because otherwise, it's going to be a big, big test. First of all, you don't know if demand gen even works for your brand. And then second, if you don't know if the creatives work as well, well, now you're just going to end up wasting way too much money. Second, use retargeting audiences to guide the algorithm. Again, with demand gen campaigns, you have the ability to add in audiences. You want to add those in on an observation basis, basically what we would do right here. And this is going to use it as a signal, as it says. That's essentially what it is. And just like a performance match campaign asset group section it's going to use it as a signal which is going to basically direct the demand gen campaign in the right path third use image and product ads with a demand gen campaign you don't want to basically be running the demand gen campaigns just for individually the videos and ad creatives instead you want it to be images and product ads which is this first one right here you don't want to choose the second or the third one and this brings me to the fourth duel of demand gen which is to use the 95.5 duel for budget distribution when it comes to demand gen campaigns which means is basically 95% of your budget should be going towards other campaigns apps like shopping, search, performance max, YouTube, etc. And only 5% of your total ad spend should be going towards demand gen. So if you have a budget of $100 a day, only spend $5 a day on demand gen. You don't have to spend more than that. At least I don't recommend it because it's not necessary. It's only going to generate a lot of demand, which your other campaigns will catch on to, and then they will use that demand to retarget and do all of these other things. But realistically, 5% is more than enough. And finally, the biggest do of all, become extremely strict with targeting plus budgets plus bids with demand gen. The looser you are with demand gen, the more money you lose, especially in the beginning. And then the more money you lose, especially in the beginning. It's gonna take a while for the demand gen campaign to really optimize up to the right audience to get you that heavy traffic coming in, which can potentially convert via the other retarding campaigns you have going on and whatnot. But it's going to be a big money pit for your brand. But again, if you run a brand doing a million dollars a year, you would rather work with an agency to get help to scale to the next level. Go on to my website at yourworking.com. Let's get a free call with me and let's see if we can potentially work together and make that happen. But check out this video right here of a case study I did of a brand. We scaled to multi-seven figures using the demand gen campaign to end this approach.